I have this Kohler engine here and I want to set the ignition timing. This process is the same for any Kohler K-series engine built in the late 50s or early 60s. There's going to be a sight hole here. Sometimes it's a round hole with a plug like this one. And sometimes it's a pie-shaped cutout in the casting. This engine still has the plug with it, so I'll remove that. It's a steel push-in plug with fingers. So you need an automotive timing light. I bought this one in 1979. On the clip that attaches to the plug wire, there's an arrow that needs to point towards the spark plug. I want to use the light on this side, so I'll run the wire through the frame to the other side and hook it to the plug wire. This type of light requires a battery to read the sensor and run the light in there, so I'll use this garden tractor battery. The tractor don't need to be connected to the battery in any way. The battery's just running the timing light. I'm going to start the engine and we'll see what happens. You have to remember the camera frame rate is not going to match the frequency of this flashing light. So it looks like the flash is inconsistent, but it's not. It's a steady flash like it's supposed to be. I see a line that goes halfway across the flywheel surface. It's hard to see on video because the video only catches some of the flashes. And this is the best video frame I had of the line while the engine's running. The line in the casting to the left of the hole is the center of the hole. The small line on the flywheel is a little above center of the hole. So those two lines almost line up. Now I want to look at the lines on the flywheel and see what's there. This is a crankshaft out of a 4 horsepower Kohler. You can see the key slot lines up with the crank throw where the rod's connected. So when that key slot's pointed straight up, the piston will be at top dead center. I'm going to rotate the engine until the key slot's straight up. And if you look over in that hole, there's a line that's lining up with the timing mark. That line goes all the way across. So that's your top dead center mark. If I rotate the crankshaft a little more, there's that mark that goes halfway across. It's the one that showed up using the timing light, so that's when the spark happens. If I rotate a little farther, there's another mark that goes all the way across. This is the mark you should see when the spark happens. The Kohler book says that mark is at 20 degrees. The mark that showed up with the timing light is just below halfway to the 20 degree mark. So the spark on this engine happens at maybe about 12 degrees if I estimate that. I'd say maybe somebody put that little mark there when they were working on this engine. Here's some other flywheel marks to look at. This one has big deep marks. There should always be two of them. One at top dead center, and one at 20 degrees before. Here's a different one. You might have a hard time finding this mark. It looks like they tried to put an S there, but missed. So it's half an S. The S is for spark, because that's the mark you should see in the hole when it sparks. On the larger Kohlers, there's more room to put the marks. 
So they'll have letters next to the marks. T is for top dead center. And S is for spark. So how are you going to adjust the timing on an engine like this? Well, the spark happens when the points open. I want to advance the spark, so I'm going to make the points open sooner. If you make the point gap bigger, the cam will have to start opening the points sooner to get there, and the spark will happen sooner. So to advance the spark, I want to make the gap bigger. The book gives two ways to adjust the points. The first method is setting the point gap with the feeler gauge to 20 thousandths. The book says the maximum gap setting can vary a few thousandths from 18 to 22 to achieve smoothest running. The second method is adjusting the point gap until the timing marks are centered in the inspection hole. So that's what I'm going to do now. Always rotate the engine until the points are open the farthest to make the adjustment. The points here were set to 21, and with this adjustment, they're now set to 25. So let's look at it with the timing light. Well, I don't see any marks. There's one down there. That's the full length mark. So increasing the gap moves it up in the right direction. Here's a screen capture from the video with the engine running. Maybe if I look upward. Yep, there's the partial mark up there. Okay, I'm going to go make the gap bigger again and see what happens. Now this is with the point set at a tight 27, so maybe it's 26 and a half. And there's the mark a little higher. So if I do that again, maybe it'll be in the middle. Well, I had to go do something else for a bit. So it's a different day and I'm in a different place, but I'm still doing the same thing. Now I have the point setting at 29. Let's see where the timing mark is. The lighting's not as good here, but the timing mark looks like it's in the right place. That's with the point setting at 29, and that's where I'm going to leave it. I don't think running the 29 gap will cause any problems. If you have a Kohler that kicks back, that is, try to run in reverse when you start it, your timing might be too far advanced. So by using the timing light, you'll know where it is, and you can put it where it's supposed to be. Well, that looks like a good fix. Shortly after that, I took it to the farming festival in Centerburg, Ohio, where my buddy and I have a wheel horse display. Saturday's the big day with more displays and more people. But Sunday afternoon, I wanted to test this 61 I've been working on. I drove it around twice, and I was able to start it with one pull both times. That timing change is what finally did it.
Alright, that's it.